Hi, my name is Louis and I'm Head of Classics at St Dominic Sixth Form College. I'm also coordinator of the Heritage Lottery funded project, Harrow on the Hill, the Spanish Armada and the English Civil War. In this short video, I'm going to introduce you to uh, the project. So the background, the motivation to conduct an archaeological survey on the site um, and also explain some of the key finds and information that we have ascertained since we begun the project in um, October 2019. In 2019, we were given kind permission by Historic England to begin archaeological work on our college grounds, um, to conduct an archaeological survey, um, and most exciting or interesting uh, as an opportunity for our students to excavate three uh, one metre by one metre test pits uh, on, on the site itself. Um, the project was uh, organised um, to commemorate uh, our 40th anniversary or 40 years uh, the college has served the Harrow community as a sixth form college so um, we organised an, an enrichment programme essentially to, to explore um, and to consider and to think about the history of our college grounds um, and sites. Um, so, I mean, this was a fantastic opportunity for our students to learn about modern archaeological survey methods, so things like you know, excavating the test pits and recording each layer, um, looking for subtle changes and variations in soil colour, um, thinking about what that may indicate about past human activity on the site, and of course also looking for finds and objects which could, could add even more colour and depth to uh, our understanding of the history of our site and human occupation here. Uh, so far, um, I think probably 30 plus students have been involved in the project, which has run from 2019 up until present. Uh, most recently, we have used Heritage Lottery funding uh, to run uh, two field schools. Uh, so students have come in uh, in first the March half term and then most recently uh, in this present current uh, summer holiday. And that's been really great because that's been given us a, a good opportunity to um, yeah, work on the site in successive days and to learn a lot more um, about it um, through um, a bit more dedicated time essentially which has enabled us to explore the site and to consider it um, in more detail than the Wednesday afternoons that we used to work on afforded. We're fortunate to have the uh, foundational remains of what was is thought to be a 16th century Spanish Armada era Elizabethan beacon or watchtower uh, on our college grounds which is right next to our LRC, our, our dedicated library building and there's the associated mound as well in which the tower was constructed on. So the tower was part of the elaborate um, and sophisticated signal system that was to alert Queen and country uh, of the impending uh, Spanish fleet um, which arrived off the coast um, of England uh, in 1588. So the tower was probably constructed in the decade or so running up to the likely Spanish invasion. So that, you know, this had been brewing for some time, um, you know, animosity um, or, 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 um, between uh, England and Spain, um, partly to do with religion, but partly also to do with English piracy um, and uh, privateering. Um, so our tower is actually really quite interesting um, and slightly peculiar or strange actually because very often these beacons were little more than a mound constructed in a prominent uh, um, position um, uh, with a fire basket or something like this constructed on it. Um, ours actually is is a lot more elaborate, you know, it, it's built of uh, stone, um, brick, um, um, and, and, and was, was, was fairly uh, grand, um, essentially, um, with things like crenellations, you know, something that we've actually discovered um, in Test Pit 3. Um, and, you know, this would have been a really impressive, imposing, large uh, feature in an otherwise fairly featureless landscape. So Harrow on the Hill at that time, as far as map records indicate, um, doesn't have too many permanent stone-built buildings. 
um, in the general sort of locality or area. So this is quite a strange or rare example um, of an Elizabethan beacon tower um, which was built in stone permanently um, and of course this is, this is really interesting because this, our students are able to sort of explore and consider um, our site's occupation during the early modern period, during the Elizabethan period and to actually associate our site with such a landmark in British history such as the Spanish Armada. We're also interested uh, in the possible association or link um, or use of the site during the English Civil War. Um, Harrow on the Hill can be associated with the parliamentarian cause, the side of Cromwell for instance, um, and through our historical research we have um, uh, considered how and why the uh, the site may have been repurposed or used as a sort of um, focal point for military activities, so a sort of muster or assembly point potentially, um, both during the Armada era of the 1580s and then later, uh, a generation later or so during the Civil War period. In the last two years we've discovered quite a lot about the site. Um, we have located in two of our test pits over the last two years, um, parts of the original wall which has been great because it's given students the opportunity um, to uh, look at a cross section of the wall down to its foundations and to record meticulously through both drawing and photography sections of the wall to think about its makeup, its build, so what the fabric of the building originally was, um, what it might have looked like, how it might have been constructed. Um, of course we've also found lots of finds which have given us the, um, the, the date range or, or finds I should say that we would associate strongly with the early modern period, the Tudor period, the Elizabethan period. Uh, so striking, most striking of these are things like uh, the, the green glazed ware, the kind of uh, Surrey Hampshire border ware which we found quite a lot of um, across the site. Things like Bartman jug fragments, so the Bellamere ware fragments again that would associate with this early modern period, so through the Armada period into the Civil War era for that type of pottery. Things like redware again, so we found things like cooking implements, uh, we found uh, evidence potentially also of the sentries uh, who would have been charged with watching and manning the tower maybe and um, you know, uh, setting a light to the fire baskets at the top when uh, the, the, the next beacon could be seen um, uh, on the horizon. So we found evidence of, of cooking material, for instance, uh, burnt animal uh, remains, things like uh, probably sheep or mutton, and, and the materials from which they would have, would have cooked their food while sitting and manning the sentries. Uh, we found lots of other interesting objects as well, uh, spanning a large, a huge period of, of, of time. So I think some of our earliest finds uh, potentially are prehistoric, so it looks like we may have found a really nice uh, Neolithic scraper um, and also some, some Roman pottery and potentially earlier medieval archaeology as well as the uh, post-medieval, the, uh, the, the Tudor and Civil War period. Um, and some later finds which we've also found things like a uh, British Army uh, service button um, which was used between 1902 to 1951 I believe and, and may also therefore indicate and um, reveal to us the continued use of the site as a prominent position to observe and look out for uh, Luftwaffe during the, the Blitz for instance because St Mary's the church on top of the hill was used by the German Luftwaffe, the German Air Force to target RAF North Pole. So perhaps the button um, you know, was lost by you know, someone from a, a dad's army-esque regiment using the beacon tower to sort of survey and look out and record or, or, or radio in Luftwaffe activity over the Harrow area. So we found lots of interesting objects. Um, we uh, have also found, um, partly through uh, historical research and the use of historical maps, uh, the, the possibility of the site uh, having a medieval uh, windmill on it. Um, there were two on top of Harrow on the Hill, uh, one associated with the Flambard residence, um, 
a, a large Tudor manor um, uh, just across the London Road. Um, we've also found uh, the possibility of a second building adjacent or slightly outside of the Beacon Tower itself, um, which appears to have been constructed in early modern bricks um, and excitingly uh, in recent uh, development we found another map which seems to indicate that there is another building um, next to the tower which um, really wasn't on record whatsoever. I should say actually that you know the, the, the tower was unfortunately demolished um, in in 1968 um, and it, it, it was once a scheduled ancient monument and it seems to have lost its scheduling during this this period of, of tragic demolition. Um, and so really nothing was known about the Beacon Tower whatsoever um, and so part of the project is to sort of um, obviously learn and discover um, you know, what we can about the site um, but also to communicate our findings to the wider community um, and we hope to sort of offer a, a public lecture for those interested and to also update the HER um, uh, archive database and to also you know, publish our findings once we have done the post-excavation work and. Um, and also conducted geophysical surveys which we're currently organising. Um, again, this will give us a, a, a much greater idea of, of what exists under the ground and will enable us to better sort of locate where our future test pits or cross-section trenches may be located. Hi, I'm Asha. I study English Literature, History and Classics and I'd love to go on to study Classical Archaeology and Ancient History at uni. Hi, my name is Lisa. I study history, philosophy and classical civilization and I would like to go on to study social anthropology and archaeology in the future. Uh, hi, my name is Alicia and I study classics, business and law. I would like to continue studying classics and archaeology in university. From the beginning of the project we learned the ins and outs of about test pits and contacts and the thing that I've learned is that it's the importance of recording what you find and recording even how the different sand textures and the soil textures can mean different things and how, how it's important to record those. Uh, we also learned about colluvial wash and how even around outside of the area that we'd think um, we'd find finds the worm movements and all sorts of movements will push it down the hill and so that when we had a test bit at the bottom we had some quite a few finds of ceramic things and even green glazed ware which was pretty cool. I've learned to expect the unexpected as the test bit we expected to find a wall in we found basically nothing in and how important it is to record everything we find so that people in the future know that a test bit may not be worth looking deeper into. I've learnt a lot about different modern archaeological practices such as the importance of drawing and photographing at each 10 centimetre spit. Um, we learnt a lot from doing this in our test bit specifically because we realised that the wall had a completely different trajectory from what we originally thought. Um, and when, when you look back at the drawings it's really interesting because you can see there's nothing and then there's, oh there's a brick, it might be set and then another 10 centimetres and it's just a full wall. So yeah. <laughs> so my favourite find has definitely got to be this probably early modern really tiny bead that we think is from um, clothing. We found a lot of clothing related items in our test but a few eaglets too and it's just really funny to imagine like this old Tudor person losing a bead and we found it now <laughs> this many years later um, and just the whole experience of being able to come into school and work on site with my friends and it's just such a rare experience to excavate a beacon like there's very few that were made of stone and that survived to this day. My favourite find so far has been this peculiar weight. Um, at first it was just a stone, so when Elitia found this thing on the floor and she passed it to me saying that it might be something and my hand dropped, it's just that feeling of excitement that you could have found something and that's why it's been one of my favourite experiences is that feeling in your stomach when you know and you think something and you have to try to figure it out even though it's quite strange. Um, so when we looked behind the scenes and um, I to figure out what this could be. There probably was a mill nearby, which that's why this stone weight thing could have been there. 
Um, another one of my favorite experiences was that very first tobacco pipe that we found when we were digging the test pit. We were just on the first context and just to know that you've been digging and that there are things in the ground that you are going to find and that initial feeling was pretty fun. As well as being able to come into school um, and just be with people and do something that you genuinely find enjoyable and learn throughout the process it was it was uh, my favorite find would probably be the piece of crenellation from the original structure of the tower as the feeling it gave me when i found it it was like i'm not digging without a purpose and that we're actually digging to find things and there's a chance we can find something really important that's going to tell us more about the elizabethan beacon Uh, I liked the way we were out on the campus without any people around so it was really quiet and we could work together in a nice atmosphere and whenever we found worms we would put it out on this tree stump for the robin to eat. Yeah. Well, what would be quite amusing as well is across the months um, in the beginning we were all pretty squirmish of the slugs and the worms and stuff and I enjoyed being the token slug remover because people would just be squirmish but obviously throughout the time that is another skill that we adapted to um, as well as in the beginning we would get excited over a small piece of modern glass and as we moved on we'd notice that obviously thicker the glass um, the older it could have been but we would get to a point where every few minutes it'd be here's some glass here's some glass and it'd be quite funny like wanting to think it's a find when, yeah. Well, I have a fun story that everyone knows now, which is how we were deceived by the metal detector. Um, we, we were brushing it over and it went all the way to, to the right. And in the instruction manual, it was like, if it beats repeatedly and on the right, this means it's a, a non-ferrous metal and it's probably very valuable. So we were like, oh my God, what if it's a gold coin? It was a 2p coin. Um, we were deceived. Um, I learnt to not trust metal detectors that blindly. <laughs> We'd like to thank the Heritage Lottery Fund for their generous grant, which has provided us with the opportunity to be able to buy more tools, and we're hoping to do a geophysical survey in the future. As well as um, working with companies to try to figure out what the finds are specifically so that we can learn more in depth of what we found through our hard work. In the future, we'd like to do a more full section trench to see more of what it looks like as right now it's quite vague and we need a more broad view of what it looks like. Mm -hmm.